Well, this morning I'm cruising through King of the Hammers, and who do we run into? Jason. Right on. How's it going? Good. Known Jason for a long time, and uh, you've always kind of been a full-size guy from the very beginning, right? Full-size high school days, yeah. I had a 83 F-250 on 35-inch Swampers back in the 90s when they first came out. Back when Swampers were the thing, huh? Yeah, boggers. They oh, boggers, yeah. Came out. yeah. You do quite a bit of wheeling, right? I know you come down to the Hammers, Moab, Utah, Sand Hollow. Seems like you're, you run around in a group that's always out there on the trails. Whenever there's a group going, I get a message or something, hey, we're going out, and I'm usually able to go. So, so it makes sense we found you at the Hammers, right? I'm down here for nine days. So uh, square body Chevy, 1974. Uh, I mean, I know it's been body swapped. Do you call this a C10? What do you call it? I call it a one-ton Chevy long bed. Call it a one-ton Chevy yeah, long yeah. bed. Call it as you see it, right? The old farm truck. So what size tires you run on this? 41 and a half, so 42 inch pit bulls. And these are radials, right? Radials. Yeah. Radials and a little bit different here. What size wheel is that? Those are 20 inch trail ready. 20 inch rims. So before we go into too much detail on this truck, we do have to let people know that this is a, a bought, not built truck in a sense. Like you've done a bunch of work to it, but you, you bought it kind of done. No, I was a fan of this rig five years ago. And if anybody recognizes this truck, this was on the front cover of Peterson's, right? October 19, that's like third or fourth last one. And yeah, it was like built up by us, built in like uh, Placerville or somewhere like Shingle that? Springs. <clears throat> Shingle by Springs. Wyatt. Uh, Rockhound Off-Road did, I think, the sliders and helped them with the work. Uh -huh. I don't know the total story, but okay. I think they did the 14 bolt. And... So this thing came up on the internet and you had seen it and known about it and liked it when it was in the magazine and decided, I'm going to go after that truck. He posted it on Instagram. Hey, I'm thinking about selling my rig. And then the, his messages on that post just went wild. And you got a hold of him. You actually looked up his phone number. My buddy got ahead of everybody. White paged him, found his number, and I left a voicemail. And when he got off work at nine o'clock at night, he gave me just a mellow phone call. Well, rig. I mean, if you're a Chevy guy, old school, a little older like myself, you know, yes. this is the truck. I mean, classic roll cage gives you that old school fall guy look right uh, with a lot of new school flair like starting with 20 inch rims 41s fenders cut low slung um maybe we'll start in the back and work our way forward because the fun stuff's in the front right, right. Yep. um so rear end 14 bolt right standard 14 bolt the old 80s 14 bolt <clears throat> i noticed you got wheel spacers on it yep so the tracks with the front equal. that way it's equal at the front because this was a snow truck, so it was important to stay the same track. You want to be on the same track. You want to be going slow. 63-inch yeah. yeah. Chevy Springs. Yep. Fox shocks. Now, uh, I noticed high clearance corners, bumper yeah, high and tight. You got a long bed. You got a lot of stick out. Drag it wherever you go. That is the one. Th that is the anchor. So that's yep. the one thing that I'm, I'm Hits quite a bit. On. So I'm looking in the back of the truck, and uh, there's a lot of stuff going on here. You didn't just come from pick and pull and pick up a fuel tank for your buddy, right? This is hooked up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, this is, this but, is where uh, the gas comes And from. also, like, the beginning of this build when, I believe the guy's name was Wyatt, right? Wyatt. When he built it, it was a junkyard build. It was like what you would build if you were in high school or a young kid, like, come across cheap parts, build something, right? Yeah. So Blazer, or Blazer or Suburban? Suburban. Suburban tank, tank in the rear. Uh, does it have a uh, fuel pump in there? Or is Electric fuel pump. Electric fuel pump. Uh, dual Optima batteries in the back here. You got toolbox back here, right? Easy access tools and then all spare parts. And then you got an electric ice chest. That's high end. Yeah. yeah. But the idea was to get the weight to the back, right? Yeah. So in the snow, you want to be equal weight as much as possible. So I heard it's it's pretty well balanced, probably like a 60-40. Well, that's pretty good. Even weight on everything. Yeah. Um, rear end, as I look down underneath there, and I think this is a uh, somebody you know, right? The AFW? Yeah, so it's Agan Fabworks. So last January at uh, Winter Jamboree in San Hollow, I spun the diff. And twisted so, the tubes. Twisted yeah. the tube, twisted out of the tubes. Yep. That, um, so he did a truss and he incorporated a torque arm like we do. We sell our torque arm kit. Yeah, same idea. And whenever we sell our torque arm kit, our brackets go half on the housing and half on the tube. As far as you can go. And the reason being is you're now welding that tube to the housing and you're not going to twist the tubes yeah. out. Now this is a step better. It's got the truss all tying it together tying and the, the, the torque arm going into the 
And up front the, is the pin guard, <laughs> pinion guards. They're tied into the pinion guards. I notice you got some Summit lowering shackles on here. Those are Belltech seven inch lowering, <laughs> lowering shackles. So they don't make Just it. so you know, my, my 89 GMC has these same shackles <laughs> yeah. on it. So don't, don't be embarrassed. I know what those are. Yeah. You got a rear winch in here, right? Yeah. That's why uh, the tank, so the tank's up, up top because there's, there is some room back here, but you don't want to, you don't want to, you don't want the tank You don't want to come down on You have to build a new tank. Yeah. Yeah. So walk around over here. Uh, like you said, I think Rockhound built you these, I believe those, these those. steps right here. And it's low to the ground. I mean, it's like a three, four inch lift Chevy pickup, you know? Um, interior, classic, hand crank windows, right? Yeah. What do you call this color? I forget what this color is called. Oh, it's Spanish gold or okra. Huh. Yeah. yeah. Um, Escalade seats. Out of ooh, Montauk. Escalade seats? Yeah. Oh, nice. I see, you know. The electric might not be working that no, great. No, the heater seats don't work, but uh, the center console is the best thing with that. So and I'm the... looking at three sticks and uh, uh, an automatic shifter there, right? Yeah, yeah. So three sticks, I would have said that you had 203, 205, 205. doubler, but you got something different, right? No, that is the Atlas 4-speed. So here we are talking about a junk, junkyard built truck, and then you got a Gucci nice. transfer case nice in here. Nice piece of jewelry in the center. Yeah, and the thing about the Atlas 4-speed is uh, a lot of guys will run a 2.0 Atlas, so it's 2.0 times 2.7, or like uh, maybe a 3.8, but this is a 4.3 Atlas 4-speed, and then you add the 2.7 of the planetary, so what's the overall crawl and low? 11, 11.7 final. Which so is, is way slow. That's Toyota slow. Great for snow, though, because you're not digging, right? Yeah, so if you're in a big snow drift, you do not want to use your throttle. I'm going to go ahead and look under here, because i got to see what's yeah. going on. So, all right, I see the Atlas, uh, 1350 front and rear drive line. Looks like uh, you got plenty of rock rash on your rear drive shaft. Oh yeah. Yeah, that torque arm does pr provide a little bit of protection on the drive shaft. Yeah. Um, and then I'm looking up underneath there, that looks like not a turbo 400. No, so that's a turbo 350. That's what was in it when I got it. Uh, it actually just blew up at Trail Hero in October, and so I just put that in, finalized it uh, three nights ago, Friday night, so I'm breaking it in out here in the hammers. And something that happened to you that happens to a lot of people with turbo 350s is the tail housing was cracked on the transmission, right? Yeah. So it's very important not to mount your transfer case too strong because the chassis flexes, moves, the engine moves, and that wants to break the back tail housing on the turbo 350. Or what Agan and I are thinking is mount the transmission cross member and put a tail housing uh, cross member, mm -hmm. mount it exactly the same way and tie it in with a skid plate, kind of like. So the skid plate is like a stiffener plate or a backbone yeah. and then same bushing, same mount, so everything moves evenly. So if you can mount those things together. And yes. like So I've actually seen it where you'll take a backbone and go like uh, off the transfer case up to the transmission bolts to like make it a solid unit too. But because uh, the Turbo 350 is plenty strong Great transmission. It's just that smaller four volt tail four housing bolts. that's the weak yeah. point. Well, we'll see how it goes. Now, I'm seeing something weird here. I've never seen a front end that looks like that. What are we, that's pinion, that pinion guard? That's got a pinion guard. It's got a lip hanging down there, and that is not a Dana 60. So, no, it's not. Uh, what do you got there? 14 bolt. That's front. a custom made 14 bolt front. So Chevy, Chevy never had them. Chevy never had them. Um, a lot of people have been doing this hybrid 14 bolt setup where it's a 14 bolt front end with basically 60 outers on it. Yeah. Um, and this one has ball joint outers, uh, as you can see. And this, I kind of have seen people do this before. There's, a, there's lots of recipes on the internet. So the TTB Dana 50 Ford trucks, mid 90s, had Dana 60 Ford wheel hubs on it and knuckles that actually had live spindles and bearings. So you couple that with a later model uh, inner C because the TTB was a fabricated housing, and now you have very affordable, very strong, four knuckles and outers, tubes yeah. pressed in, 14 bolt front. Um, there's, there's, a, it's always a work in progress here, and so this is kind of weird. Tell us about that. So, because this is welded. 
Yeah, so that welded to the diff cover. Bolt diff cover sticks out way farther than usual. Yep. And so with the hydro assist, you got to protect it. Yeah. So put kind of a ram guard in there. So this is a skid or ram guard, but it's actually welded to the diff cover. Welded so to the diff cover. When so. you got to take the diff out of there, <laughs> you, you got to cut. Hell. You cut that piece, right? Yeah, you're taking out the four. And you've bolts. done that before. I've gotten in there twice. Because you broke a shaft in Moab, right? Yeah. And your, yep. It eats up the seal. So to do a 14 bolt, yeah, the outers are all you know, Ford part numbers, you need inner axles that are custom made. Because it's then, a 30 spline, big diameter 30 spline. Yeah. Yep. And so. then um, most things are sealed on the outside of the axles. And, and so Crane Brothers makes- They have the those spanners with the seal yep. built into it, Which right? is a Dana 60 part number. Yep, that's pretty cool. So it's sealed inside here with the 14 bolt housing. Yep. Now, I noticed the drag link pretty steep coming down. If you go from point to point, it's not as bad. But in order to get the crossover steering under the leaf springs, because it's low slung and there's no high steer arm available yeah. for that knuckle, it's kind of a give and take on that. But it's in there, it's working. It's 90% hydro assist. Yeah, when you have hydro assist, all the pressure goes through that ram. So that's basically just aligning everything, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, killer uh, kind of high clearance front bumper, winch in the front as well. You want to pop the hood, show us what's yep. under the hood? Love the hood patina, by the way. Yeah, and the. Uh, KOH dust that's been covered. So first off, right away, in order to get it this low on 41s, uh, no inner fenders. No inner fenders, easy way to put headers on though. It, very lot, easy, maintenance wise. I you do take a lot a, of work through those. You take a tire off, you're climbing right in there, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, looks like a Holly Sniper. Now, something is off on this motor. What's the deal? It does not look like a Chevy motor. So everybody asks, is this a big block 454? It yeah. is an Oldsmobile 455 that's been bored out to a 469 with a little RV cam. You think it came out of a jet boat? It's, I got people It with sounds jet like boats. a jet boat. Yeah. <laughs> so that's, that's the boat motor I, I don't, I mean, it's still, you know, technically a GM product, you know? Yeah. I, uh, uh, I have not seen that. So the big thing with this, so I think there's like a big block Cadillac, but this is the second, I believe, lowest Torque. So 500 foot pounds of torque at like 1500 RPM. That's awesome. Crawler. York uh, air compressor. So the rear axle does have an ARB. That's awesome. So there's a York compressor. These things, well, this this pump, well, it's two minutes a tire. Oh, to that's from like the, eight to 20. Unless you rev it up, then it'd be faster, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. So pretty classic, simple, easy under the hood, right? Yep. Yeah. Love that. Headers tucked in there. I bet finding Oldsmobile headers isn't too easy to fit on a Chevy. Actually, that's a new upgrade I did because I had a cracked manifold, so it was making yeah. some noise. Yeah. So they fit right on. So those are just Oldsmobile headers, and I just had to ball peen hammer, heat up one, and clearance it for the, the frame right here. I like it. It, it. They went right in. I like it. Yeah. And I noticed you got Lee Springs, Fox Shocks with a Pro Comp air bump. Yeah. Um, and the springs are dead flat. So they are Rancho four inch springs. It's, it's so I'm gonna look over on this side. So take a look in here. So those are just square body Rancho four inch springs. So they're dead flat. It's like what you would order out of, you know, Summit Magazine or whatever, right? Yep, that's what I lifted my Ford back in the day. Just So something is weird. So if you back up and you look at the tire in the front wheel well, this thing is Ford like three inches. Three inches. But if you look at the front hanger, and the rear shackle through the frame, they're in the factory spot. So Fox what's going on there? So that was, uh, the main leaf was drilled out and moved three inches. So that's a trick we did, you know, back in Nam. Yeah, yeah. You know, you take out your springs, go through like 10 drill bits, carbide bits, yeah. redraw all the springs, move the center pin forward. So if you look at it, I mean, you could visibly see the leaf spring plate is completely offset to the front, Yeah. right? Now, I noticed just peeking around which this is what we're gonna try and help you out with on this thing. Uh, Cause I think it still would be good to get to crossover steering, right? I, I need crossover steering. I need to get rid of that drag link. So in looking at this Pittman arm here, this thing is almost dead flat. Yeah. And the center line of the Pittman arm is damn near over the over the leaf spring plate okay. because the axle has been moved so far forward, right? Yeah, so the drag link has to go so, forward. So along. the drag link actually moves forward like four inches yeah. to get to the steering arm, which is okay. That doesn't hurt anything. But it just doesn't allow you to do full high steer because the tie rod would be hanging under the pitman Hit, arm it. and just up traveling it uh, and running into it. Um, other than that, I mean, this truck is just, it just screams America. <laughs> yes. I mean, it's America. It, it reminds me 
so much of high school with so much new school flair. It's like a, it's a crossover. It's like a, it's kind of like a mullet, you know? Yes. Business up front, party in the back, I right? did, I got this truck, tried growing out a mullet, <laughs> grew it into the years, and I said I couldn't do it to it, it basically bridges like a 30 year gap of vehicles being, you know, can you imagine what people would have thought if you had 20 inch rims in, you know, 1991 when you're in high school? No, even now there's not a lot of 42 inch, 20 inch tires. Oh, those are 42s. 41 and a half. For 41 and a half. Yeah, you're right. There isn't. You know, there's I mean, Nitto has a set. Yep. BFGs, but they're stickies. Yep. yep. So there's not a lot of options. And then Pitbull. I don't know if they're out of business or not. They're in a hiatus right yeah. now because we're, you, Kevin Yoder's racing on three-year-old pit bulls, uh, yeah, but yeah. they still eat it up. They yeah. still work good. Well, uh, I don't know, is there anything we missed on this? So uh, The reverse manual valve body? Oh, you got reverse manual valve body in the Turbo 350, so you can go right from first to reverse, right? Yeah, so that's rocking back and forth in the snow, nice yep. and easy. Yeah. If you're on a rock ledge and you're getting tippy, you can just slam it into reverse and come down. Yeah. So. And I mean, these Cadillac seat emblems, that, that makes the whole thing, uh, right? Yeah. That's amazing. Headliner's still in this truck. Yeah. I mean, like, don't mess with the paint. It doesn't really need much more. Now it's just maintain it and wheel it, right? So I'm out a lot, and full-size Invasion last year, three guys rolled. Yeah. So I need, I need a cage. So I'm yeah. going to change, get the headliner out. The seats are going to come out. I need an internal cage tied to the frame. Yep. And I need PRP seats or something. Something like a little safer with yeah. some harnesses. Yeah. It's, it's time. So it's this year's just upgrade. I, I was back and forth. Am I putting a lot of money into coilovers and suspension? It just works with the Elite it, Frank? Look, look, here's, I'm a firm believer if it ain't broke, don't fix it. It works. The truck is doing it. It's working. It flexes. You may give it up a little bit, like high speed out here in the yeah. whoops and desert, but that's not the kind of wheeler you are anyway. I know you. You're not a 80 mile an hour wheeler. You're a crawl and finesse wheeler. Yeah. yeah. Um, so good. Uh, we're going to be up there for full size invas invasion uh, this summer. The Rubicon. Absolutely, Rubicon. we're going right. to come on that run. I don't know what we're bringing, but something. Yeah. Um, uh, and there are guys across the country and in Canada that are coming for that, that trip. Yeah. So, I can't wait to be there on that. I haven't done any full size invasion trips with you guys, so it's uh, the guys. It's like they are yeah. a good group of guys. When we all know we have absurd big rigs. Yeah. When they break, everything just stops. Yeah. Plugs the, the trail, everything. Yeah. So yeah. is what it is. Well. Jason, yeah. thank you very much for Good showing me the truck, and uh, uh, I look forward to seeing it more. All right, man.